Hey friends, Dave Tenson here and we are on session three on our series of lack and today the subject is conflict and rivalry. This is going to be a really brief subject. Um, uh, it may give you some further study but um, I've, we've had just had some unforeseen stuff happen today so I'm going to move through this quickly but it's okay, we weren't going to go into prayer ministry time anyway. I just wanted to make you aware of something that lack leads to and often that is conflict and rivalry. So if you've been joining us live, um, you can catch session one or two on the events page um, for the series in Lack. I encourage you to do that. Um, on Monday, we talked about the trauma of Lack. On Tuesday, um, we talked about um, Lack uh, with agreements with Lack and also disappointments with God when Lack comes. So how does Lack lead to conflict and rivalry? Now, um, again, I've been doing quite a bit of teaching off um, the Heart of Provision CD Soaking Prayer teaching, especially with disappointment. Today I'm doing a teaching from, um, a, uh, a part of it is on the um, teaching album uh, called Out of the Tombs, which is about church wounds um, and how to heal them and some of the dynamics in that. So, as you notice too, it's early in the morning here. I've got my lights on. It's a sultry day. The weather's turned. It's the first day. Of winter but it's been a hectic 24 hours so let's get into this how does conflict lead how does uh, lack lead to conflict and rivalry um, this is these are the names I want to give you today Rene Girard is a was a literal theorist and came up with something called mimetic theory an amazing um, uh, story an amazing um, way that he came across this theory but the theory has some very basic premises and it's leaked into theology into psychology into social sciences so if you love psychology social sciences behavior if you love anthropology if you love literature um, get a hold of Rene Girard's work he's written plenty of books and others have written some really good books on him the theory has some, has some basic premises number one is that desire is actually caught Desire is something that is inherently caught almost on a non-conscious level. So we think we desire things automatically, but desire is actually caught. And so you actually begin to desire things that other people do. Now we are, they, they've theorized and began to experiment with this and shown this largely to be true, that even children will desire the same objects. And if you've got kids, you've seen them fight over, you know, little things. It'll be over... You know, I've got a blue pen, even though there's a red pen, there's a black pen, all of a sudden everyone wants the blue pen because this is the object of my desire. If we didn't desire the same things, we wouldn't be able to belong because belonging in itself and being the same as others and desiring the same is what gives us our sense of group and tribe identity, which our personal identity comes out of as well. And so you see people begin to desire the same thing, desire the same cars, marketing knows, desire the same clothes, desire the same status, desire the same opportunity, desire the same lifestyle, desire the same um, position of authority, desire the same wealth, desire the same goods and material, all that things continues to go. We have to desire the same thing so that we can belong. Okay, and so the first part of the theory is that all desire is actually uh, caught. It is caught, it is caught mimetically, it's copied. This word mimetic theory is, you can see the word mime there, which means copy. Oh, we're back. And I think we just dropped out. Um, so we copy one another. We, um, and so the, we do that in order to belong. The second part of the theory is that desire then, um, after it creates this belonging, um, tends to um, mean that we get we, we desire the same objects and a classic story is two young boys they grow up next to each other they like playing Lego there's plenty of Lego to go around they like riding bikes there's plenty of bikes to go around they like skateboarding and they grow up same so they like wearing the same sort of clothes they like belonging to one another and one belonging they're quite the same they're not exactly the same but same enough that they can identify with one another and feel that they're belonging but you see, there's always enough lot, a lot of Lego, there's always a, enough footies to kick around and everything. But, you know, they grow up together, and this is classic in, in literature. Two boys are best of friends, but all of a sudden, across the road, Jane moves in across the road. Now, there's not five Janes like there is Legos and footballs. There's only one girl. And so here's these teenage boys that have grown up together. They're the best of friends. They desire the same thing. It creates belonging. And then, bang, all that desire 
comes and merges on a single object. Now, here's these boys, they're best of friends, and here's conflict and rivalry has taken place. The very thing that brought them together is now going to cause some kind of conflict and rivalry. There's no one to control it. There's no organization to say you can only have one. There's, there's just a limited resource. There's a lack. There's a lack of Janes. There's plenty of boys, but a lack of Janes. And so conflict and rivalry happen between these boys as the desires merge upon a single object and that object um, creates sort of a lack. And they, they do sort of a, a triangle here. So we have um, Jane at the top here and we have boy one and boy two here. Okay, and there's a lack here. So in order for boy one to get Jane, he's going to have to eliminate boy two somehow there'll be some kind of violence some kind of uh, thing and this is what Rene Girard um, theorized saw that through culture when there is a lack of things when there is a lack of uh, objects when there's a lack of um, uh, resource when there's a lack of opportunities you find that um, there is violence just increases hard violence um, soft violence, all sorts of things. Now, this is this is a heavy, a heavy topic. I'm I'm seeing your comments there, but I want you to see this just very quickly. And you can research all this yourself if you want to. When we live with a, a heart and and an attitude of lack, that there's not enough opportunities, that there's not enough um, resource, that there's not enough positions available, there's not enough, and we live with a deep sense of lack, what often we find is, is that we fall into conflict and rivalry. There'll be some kind of violence as desires merge upon limited resource. And if, and you know, most schools, organizations, governments all exist to try and just contain some kind of chaos that will often happen because there is a limited amount of resource. How do we know this? Look, look in Genesis 2. Genesis 2, it talks about the, the fruit and um, the objects to be desired. That It says that Eve saw the fruit and it was to be desired. You see, uh, sorry, Genesis 3. You see in Genesis 4, you see, um, the, um, you see um, Cain and Abel there, and there's a limited resource, as it would seem that, you know, Cain is like, there's a lack. There's a lack of acceptance towards me. Abel's got all the acceptance, and so the limited resource in his mind was God's acceptance, and so he kills his brother and knocks him out in order to get the some kind of acceptance. This is where jealousy and violence and all these things come out um, from all these things. So there are stories, there are things that are always... Um, you can read of in the Bible, and, and Rene Girard says that all, all culture, all culture is actually um, uh, founded on, on violence, and you often find there's some sort of mimetic thing. So for you and I, beloved, this is, the, this is the lesson, this is what I want to challenge us today. Are there areas of lack in our heart where we don't feel that we've got enough something? There's a lack of resource, there's a lack of emotions, there's a lack of energy, there's a lack of opportunities, there's a lack of... Um, money, there's a lack of um, friends, there's a lack of something, and that lack causes us to be violent in some way, by way of jealousy, by way of slander, by way of um, anything that we do, and that causes us to almost take on this Canaanite type spirit that says, well, in order for me to get what I want, I'm willing to sacrifice that person. I'm willing to put those things away. I'm, I'm willing to ignore them. And there can be hard violence, which is physical hard violence under death and soft violence, slander, gossip, all those things are soft kind of violence. But the heart behind them is exactly the same. The heart behind them is to say, um, you are... Uh, you, I, I desire that object more than I desire and value you. And so is there a sense of lack in your heart, beloved? Is there a sense of lack within us that is causing conflict and tension? And so that's, that's very simple. That's, that's my challenge to you today in this series. Tomorrow we're going to talk about generational flow with lack and so on. 
Um, and uh, on Friday, if you have any questions, we can answer those as well. But today is brief, it's sweet, and I'm hoping that uh, if you want to, you can find out more about it. Again, the name of this um, theory is Mimetic Theory. René Girard is the uh, creator of that, and it's leaked into all sorts of stuff. I do an advanced, more advanced teaching on, on it in the Out of the Tombs teaching, as I said. So, uh, very sweet, very brief today. Bless you. Thank you for joining us live. I really hope that, um, I really, look, let's not just do arguments. Let's not do, I don't want to, let's just not do arguments here in the commentary just please friends you know let's I'm not even gonna go there here's the thing that I've learned uh, when threat comes Jesus asks us as he asked Peter to put the sword down violence rivalry and conflict over theories over doctrines over eternity over all these things is not worth getting into the thing that will always combat violence and conflict and rivalry is forgiveness. We must forgive. We must let go. We must move on. We must not pull out the sword. We mustn't be violent. That's okay. It's, it's all cool, Linda. Um, let's, let's just love. Let's forgive. Let's move on. Let's allow uh, our lives to be the, the gospel incarnate. Uh, don't bother entering into it. It's a tragedy when, we, when anybody's wounded because we're all deeply loved and carry the image of God. So, beloved, thank you for tuning in. Um, let me encourage you to join the event. Tomorrow we're talking about generational stuff. It's going to be pretty exciting. And, uh, and if you do have any questions, please put them in the discussion section on the event. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.